Well, it did not end up going down to freezing last night. I think it, or it was actually supposed to be seven o'clock this morning where it went down to freezing and it didn't. It went down to, I think 34 and uh, that was it. So, and then now uh, weather.com is saying that we're gonna, the low temperatures are gonna be in the 40s for the foreseeable future, which means that I have more time with my tomatoes. So there are lots of smaller tomatoes out on the vine. And if I have a few more warmer weeks, then we'll get more of that stuff. But I have a bunch of green tomatoes that I pulled just in case, so I'll have to wait on those to ripen up. Now, um, I've mentioned this in previous years on my other channel, but one of the things that you can do, I mean, you can ripen tomatoes on your countertop. You can put them in a paper bag to ripen them faster. And when I say ripen, I'm going to use quote unquote, because when you, when you put a tomato in a bag to, to ripen, it really just turns the tomato red and makes it softer but the flavor doesn't develop. So you end up with this tomato that you think is gonna be ripe, but it doesn't taste the way it actually should. The best thing to do is to pull your tomatoes, like before, before you're gonna get a frost, pull your tomatoes and then put them in your garage, because your garage should be cool, and, um, or someplace that is cool, you know, if you have a really, really cool place in your home, but it, the garage is great and set them on a rack or a, like a window screen that is suspended between boxes or something just so that cool air can circulate around the tomatoes and then they will continue. I've had them continue to ripen up well into November when the middle of September is the end of our growing season. So, so speaking of the baby, um, she has been gone for 14 days now not that I'm counting. Um, I cried for the first 10. Um, the first four days I cried like big boo-hoo, ugly face crying and my heart just hurt and I'm going to get teary <laughs> talking about it right now. But then, um, but then it went to just a lot of people were asking me about her and how I was doing. And so that would make me get teary and um but the last four days I have not and I think in part because it's been you know two weeks now but also because we're getting closer to when we're going out there to see her so I'm probably not as uh fragile because I know I'm going to be seeing her soon she is having a good time where she is. They went on a vacation to Catalina Island. She went on a couple of boats. Um, she, and it was hilarious because there were pictures that her mother was putting up on Facebook and she, she was just like asleep in pretty much every one. There was one where she was on the back of a bike, you know, in one of those um, baby seats on the back of a bike and she had a helmet on and everything and she just had her head dropped to her chest she was sound asleep so um, I feel proud of myself for for having her on a good sleep schedule because when we got her she was a mess and she would not have fallen asleep if she didn't any distraction she would not have fallen asleep so she would just she would just get more and more cranky and so if I hadn't changed that in her and gotten her on a really good schedule, then she would not be falling asleep whenever she's tired and she would just be a cranky baby. But um, yeah, she knows when she needs sleep, no matter what's going on. And apparently she is making naps happen for herself. So that's really good. Okay, and the other thing is, this is gonna be really interesting because I'm going to the dentist today and just for a cleaning and it's gonna be really interesting to see how they do that with do this whole thing with COVID. Yeah. Okay, let me just say I hate the term new normal. I absolutely refuse to say this is our new normal. I don't believe it is. I don't think this is our new normal. I think we are going to get past this. I think there is either going to be a vaccine or that we're going to reach herd immunity. I think we're going to get past this. I, I really do. And 
I think that we still need to take it seriously. I think that, you know, I certainly don't want to get it because you hear about people who are old or have underlying health conditions and they have bad outcomes. But then you hear about, you know, a 40 year old guy who runs marathons who, who got it and died. So I, you know, it's just seems so random how, how it hits people. So I certainly don't want to get it, but I am, I, I just believe that we're going to get past this. I don't know how long that's going to take, but I think we are. And so I hate it when I hear people say, well, this is our new normal. I always say, no, it's our normal for now. And this is our normal for now. I mean, I have, I carry masks in my purse, a couple of them. I have one in my car. I, you know, it's, it's just something we have to do. All of these precautions, you know, these are things we have to do for now, but I really believe that life is going to get back to our normal from before. Maybe we'll be better with washing our hands and, and I hope some things don't change. You know, like I don't ever want to go back to bar three with 30 people crammed in a room. I don't ever want to do that. I don't ever want to go into a restaurant and sit down with another table a foot and a half away from me. I just, I don't ever want to go back to that. So, so maybe some of this stuff is good, um, but yeah. Okay, that's enough of my rambling. Okay, so the dentist experience was really interesting. Um, first of all, I have to say that um, they were really nice. I've been in places like at the dermatologist's office where they treat me like I'm going to make them sick when they're actually more likely to make me sick because they see so many patients in a day. But I've been, like I've had people order me around, do this, wash your hands, go over here, set your purse down. It really makes me mad when people do that. So at the dentist, they were not like that. They were all very nice, very friendly. They did take my temperature at the door, had me fill out you know the a survey the day before about how I was feeling, and then. Um, I wore a mask in, they had plexiglass to separate the front desk people. Then in the room where I was getting my teeth cleaned, the lady was wearing um, an N95 mask with a, one of those blue medical masks over it and then a shield. She put a shield on when she was actually cleaning my teeth. Um, she had me swish for 45 seconds with this stuff called Peroxol, which is a peroxide kind of a thing by Colgate. So I swished for 45 seconds, spit it out, then I um, had to wash my hands, and then she had me sit down. And from then on, you know, she was just talking away to me and, um, you know, put the shield on herself when she was cleaning my teeth. The dentist was really nice when he came in to take a peek into my mouth and everything. So the whole thing just felt very normal. It just didn't look normal. And so, so yeah, it was actually a pretty decent experience. The, the lady did say though, the, the hygienist said, you know, even after this whole thing with COVID is over, she said, I think I'm still gonna wear the shield. She said, I, you, you can't believe how much stuff ends up on this shield after every patient. She said, so that means that it ends up on me when I'm not wearing a shield. She said, I don't think I'm ever gonna stop using the shield, but. All right, I just came from getting a flu shot. So um, yeah, it's been kind of a, a busy morning. Picked up some records for Diana from the doctor's office and then went to Walgreens to get my flu shot. And um, you know, I was thinking about the COVID vaccine for whenever they have that. I don't know, I'm guessing that you know it seems promising that, that they're gonna have one. But I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of those things that if this is not like measles where you get a vaccination you get one vaccine and you're fine for the rest of your life i'll bet you it's more like the flu where you have to go and get vaccinated you know every year but i'll bet you this because the the flu vaccine i the guy was just telling me that the flu vaccine is good for six months so if the COVID vaccine is only good for six months, you know, we don't usually go in in the springtime to get a flu shot for the summer because it just isn't around. But if COVID is around all the time, then we're probably gonna have to go in twice a year to get 
a shot. You know, every fall, every spring, we go get our COVID shot. Kind of crazy, but this is the world we live in. There's a deer out here and her baby. I, if this is the one I've seen before, there are two babies. Yep, is that a baby over there? Yes, okay. Let me zoom in for you. So there's the mama in the middle. Baby number one is, let me get my finger in here, right there. And then baby number two is right, can you see her, right there? I love that even though we put up a fence, we can still see the deer. Little babies, they're so cute. Last year there were, um, you know, there was a, a mama that had three with her and we saw them at the end of the season because we would tell people about it and they would say, well, she's gonna lose at least one of those to coyotes. And um, at the end of the season, when they were much bigger, they were, there were still three of them. So I was really happy. Hey guys, it's Saturday morning and we decided to come downtown to a place called the Toasted Owl to have breakfast. You know why? Because we can. <laughs> Although we were starting to take the baby with us places. Did you want to say something? Oh, I thought you were going to. Anyway, um, yeah, we just decided that we would um, come down here. It's pretty quiet. We left early from home, but it's just after 8 o'clock now. And um, anyway, it's a beautiful day. I'm loving seeing more people getting out in the downtown area. And um, so it feels good. It's day 16 that the baby's been gone. Not that I'm counting. Um, <laughs> it's not been easy. It's you know it's been pretty sad for me. Um, it, John had has had moments, right? Yeah. But um, but anyway, um, it's just kind of been kind of trying to get life back to what it was, which is almost impossible to do in a pandemic. But um, trying to remember, you know, trying to rem remember the things we used to do and actually get out and do them. Here's my breakfast. It's smashed avocado toast with feta cheese and a balsamic glaze. Yum. What did you get? Veggie scrambled. Peaches are in season. I thought I would buy a few and preserve them by freezing them. And so it's really easy to do. Now you can, when you, when you freeze them and store them away, you could either thaw them out and use them in baked goods, you know, like a peach cobbler or something like that. You could also use them in a smoothie and not have to pay those exorbitant prices for the bagged frozen fruit. So all you have to do, some people peel them, but you really don't need to do that. So you wanna make sure that the peach is, peach is nice and ripe, but not too ripe. Like when I cut this one open, it just fell away from the peach stone, which is really good. I'm gonna cut this into smaller pieces, and then I put it in a lemon juice bath, which is four cups of water to two tablespoons of lemon juice. And then you let them soak in that for five minutes. And then I'll show you what you do next. So now I have just dumped these into a colander. I'm gonna let them drain off a little bit. So I took them out of the colander, put them on parchment paper on some baking sheets. And now I'm gonna put these in the freezer. You can put them in for, you can put them in overnight or about four hours is really what you need at a minimum. Because what's gonna happen now that they're being frozen separately is that later you can take these and throw them all into a Ziploc bag and they're not all going to stick to each other because they'll be individually frozen and that way when you're ready to use them you can just reach in your Ziploc bag pull them out separately and you know not have this big clump of peaches to try to deal with. Another batch of pasta sauce today. It's going to be a really pretty batch because it's got so many yellow tomatoes in it. I decided to put the peels in my food dehydrator uh, to see if um, I've heard that you can take the tomato peels and once they're dried you crush them down to a powder like in a spice grinder and then you add liquid to it and it makes tomato paste. Who knew? 
And here we go, a nice bag of frozen peaches. Always be sure to label anything that you store away because sometimes when they've been in there for a while, you kind of forget what they are. You also forget um, the date. Be sure to put the date on there. Um, so I've got September of 2020, but today actually is Diana's first birthday. Hey guys, it is Sunday morning and I am heading over to the farmer's market for the first time this year. Um, the farmer's market was closed for a long time. It was being treated like it was some kind of an event, like a concert kind of a thing, you know, gatherings with with um, lots of people and so and not being treated like it was a grocery store which was allowed to be open and so the city I guess or the, I don't know the people who run the farmers market was you know having all these conversations with the city about this and just saying hey or maybe it was a statewide thing I don't know it was partially a city thing and just saying hey this is no different than people being allowed to go to grocery stores they're they're not sitting down they're not like sitting in close proximity um, we can require people to use masks and all this stuff so they finally opened the farmers market I missed the memo on that and um, and then I just forgot and so it is every Sunday from 10 to 12 and um, some are not 10 to 12 8 to 12 and then every other week our church has been meeting in person outdoors to have church service so on those Sundays um, I I don't go because I don't really have much time and um, and then I have been forgetting so I actually put a sticky note in my kitchen this morning so I would remember to go I am on the hunt for sweet corn and some bread from this uh, company called the, the Village Baker. And they have really great bread, and so I'm hoping they will be there. I'll be able to get that, so. Okay, so when I was getting ready this morning, I don't have any makeup on. I put, I did all my skincare all the way up to my tinted sunscreen, and then I didn't do <laughs> anything else. Um, but I was saying to John, you know what, what, one good thing about this pandemic and having to wear a mask is that I can go into public, I can go into a grocery store, and I can, you know, wear my sunglasses, or if it's inside a grocery store or something, just put my glasses on and have a mask on, and it's no big deal. I don't worry about having not that I worry about having makeup on, but I like to wear makeup when I'm in public. I just feel better. But so many times I have gone out without makeup during this thing because I'm figuring that most people aren't going to recognize me anyway. You know, I live in kind of a small city and um, most people aren't going to recognize me. And if they do, they're not going to be able to really see that I don't have any makeup on. So that's been a good thing. All of that to say that it kind of inspired me to think about some quirky things things that I think are good good things that have come about from the pandemic and so I'm gonna do a video about it don't get me wrong I don't I wish the pandemic never happened it's been tragic and um, and I wish we could go back to life the way it was I think we will eventually but I wish I wish we never had to go through this but there are definitely some things that I'm happy about and I'm going to do a video about this. So maybe you guys wanna chime in on some of your pet peeves that have been made better by the pandemic. And so just a few of them, like, like one thing for me is that I hated going to crowded exercise classes at Bar 3. I would look for instructors who did not bring in very many people because there's there were there was one instructor the owner who everybody loves and her classes would get packed and there were 28 bar spaces in that room but she would always allow two more people in so it'd be 30 people plus the instructor in this room and here we live in Flagstaff that has the lowest humidity close to anywhere on the planet sometimes less than 5% and my hair would frizz up from the from the humidity caused by human sweat alone and that just grossed me out so i would actually look for the instructors who only brought in about 14 people to class just so that there would be some space in the room and i hope 
we never go back to having classes that are that packed again. Also, whoever thought it was a good idea to pack tables in so tight at a, at a restaurant that you're sitting a foot away, like you know those bench seats, and then they put tables so close that you are one foot away from the person next to you, that's just greed, I think. It's not a good, it's not a positive restaurant going experience to be sitting that close to so someone you don't know and try to have a conversation next to somebody else's conversation right next to you. Bad idea. Um, and so, so anyway, there, I, I have come up with, uh, seven things so far, six, seven, something like that. Um, and, uh, let me know if you have any quirky things that have resulted um, from the pandemic that have, you know, kind of turned out to be good things for you in the midst of all this. <clears throat> I mean, I know there are really big good things like people are more socially connected. They're reaching out and making time to connect through virtual means. Um, our air pollution is clearing up in the country. We are, are in the world. Um, you know, there's, there's some really great things that are happening um, around the whole world as a result of this. But do you have any pet peeves that have been satisfied through this whole thing? Let me know. Just wanted to say real quick that yesterday was Diana's first birthday. Um, they posted a picture of her. They bought a big piece of cake for her and um, it's so funny. I'm such a neat freak. I, I would I would have been a terrible mother, although I might have been a different kind of mother when I was, you know, in my 20s or 30s. But I just can't stand the thought of like spaghetti sauce in a baby's hair or whatever. And I know they have to do that when they're learning to feed themselves. But I was always really guided, you know, guided her, her hand to her mouth when she was using a spoon and everything. And um, so they were, of course, wanting her to take the cake and put it all over herself, which I would have done. If she was still with us for her birthday, I would definitely have done that thing. And I would have just gotten over my, my gross out from her having cake all over herself. But she wouldn't do it. She actually was just looking at the cake and kind of like stick her fingers and kind of very gently like grabbed a little berry that was on top and so I don't know if at any time because the video ended at one point I don't know if at any time she actually um, smeared the cake on herself or took a huge bite or whatever but she looked like she was just being you know very delicate about it and not wanting to get terribly dirty so um, maybe that was my influence I don't know bad grandma who knows hi guys I wanted to show you something I just finished well John did part of it, and then I just finished off with it. But for years, I have been taking my medals from my uh, half marathon and marathon walking races that I do, and I have been putting them on hangers in a closet. And so I had tons of them because I don't even know how many I've done now. 24 half marathons, and I think I've done five full marathons as a walker and walkers do the same races that runners do. They just have to walk fast enough to finish within the time frame. So I have all these medals and I wanted to display them somehow without taking up an, you know, like an entire wall of things. And so I got this thing. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. So here it is. I have to kind of, uh, I have to kind of show you from an angle because it is behind the door, as you can see here, and there's a wall right there. So um, I bought this thing online, this metal piece, and it is designed to be away from the wall. It sticks out from the wall so that, you know, the bulk of the metals can kind of stand out from the wall. And so John made this thing, he actually made it when we were in Camp Verde, he made this background thing to mount this on. And um, then we were deciding to move, so we never hung it up. And then we got here and we were in the apartment. <laughs> and so all these years later, I'm finally getting this thing hung up. And I'm really excited about it. He had to use like some anchors to put in the wall because this is really heavy. Each of these metals, I mean, these things, these are, are pretty heavy 
And um, when I was carrying them all back here, I dropped a couple because it was, it was they're pretty heavy things. So I just I tied knots in them, like double knots on these this layer, and then a single knot on this middle layer, and then just hung these bottom ones. Um, yeah, it worked out really well because I have all of these, you know, all these metals, and rather than having them all be bunched up down here at the bottom where you can't see each individual one, they're at different levels so that you can actually see them. So I feel kind of good about having a place to put my medals that I worked so hard for over the course of, I think it was 10 years. No, longer than that. 13 years. I started, my first race was in 2006 and my last, oh, longer than that. My last race was in uh, 2020 in January. So I'm kind of thinking that I'm, I'm done with the long distance walking thing. I'm just not as into it. It, does, it doesn't feel as satisfying to me as it used to. I think it's a great form of exercise, but I really love bar three and it only takes an hour. <laughs> and to get a really good walking workout, uh, you know, sometimes you have to walk several hours. So a side dish tonight for dinner that is sour cream cucumbers. This comes from, you guys may remember this old cookbook, the Better Homes and Gardens new cookbook. I'm sure maybe some of you have the one that's not the new cookbook, book, but just cookbook. I think my mom got this for me. Man, maybe when I got married, but you know, I was 32 when I got married. She might have gotten it for me before then, and I looked in here and it doesn't say a publication date. But this recipe is a go-to recipe. John absolutely loves this. And it is super easy. It calls for two medium cucumbers, thinly sliced, a small onion, thinly sliced, and then you mix up a half a cup of sour cream, a tablespoon of vinegar, a teaspoon of sugar, and a half a teaspoon of salt. You mix all that together and then toss it with the cucumbers and onions. So here's the mix, and here are the cucumbers and onions. I'm using Armenian cucumbers but you can use any kind, and I took the seeds out. You don't have to do that, but but I did. And it is super tasty. It almost gets better as it sits in the fridge. You know, the flavors get better. But if you have this, look it up. It is in the salads and dressings section. If you have the new Better Homes and Gardens cookbook, <laughs> or maybe you have a new, new, new. But if you have this one, it's on page 335. It's in salads and dressings. Okay, you guys, I am trying out my first indoor bar three class where they have, where they're requiring a mask. Um, a little while ago, they opened up the studio and they were socially distancing everybody and reducing the number of people in the class it's by half. So instead of 28, they were having 14. And then we had to shut down again and um, I think two weeks ago, they opened back up. We're still doing the outdoor classes, which I've been going to, but a couple weeks they opened up. Um, a couple weeks ago, they opened up again. There's only eight people in the class at the most, and you have to wear a mask through the whole class. I have been avoiding this, but I figured winter is coming. We're not gonna be able to do outdoor classes forever. I'm more motivated to work out when, um, like there's a penalty at bar three, if you sign up for a class and then you don't show, you have to pay 15 bucks. Um, if you sign up for a zoom class and you don't show, then it's no big deal. They don't charge you anything. So I'm more motivated to go and there's a penalty, but this is going to be, I think this is going to be tough. So I'll let you know what I think. All right. So, um, how was the bar three class with a mask on? It was not awful. Um, I would much rather do a class without a mask on, but it, there were two things that came to mind. One was that it felt like at certain points, especially the cardio, like I was having an ongoing hot flash on the front of my face. <laughs> um, but I've been dealing with hot flashes for years anyway, so that was, you know, fine. Um, yeah, it wasn't really, there was one point where I was breathing pretty hard and the mask, you know, was kind of sucking in every time I would take a breath. 
and that was a little bit annoying but I suppose I will get used to that and the other thing that I noticed that makes me inspired to go back to the studio to take a class even though I have to wear a mask is that having the mirror there to watch myself that really showed me that when I'm exercising outside or even the the zoom classes where I'm not looking at myself that I'm not working as hard there's something about that mirror there and me watching myself going oh yeah uh, I need to I need to push this a little harder so I'm gonna keep going to outdoor classes two days a week because I like them and it's not gonna last too much longer it's gonna get too cold for that eventually but I'm gonna keep doing that and I'm gonna go to studio classes at least once a week maybe twice we'll see how that goes it was also good to actually be exercising well, I get to do this when I do outdoor classes, but to be exercising around people, but just being in the studio is great.